Good morning. We're worshipping together today the congregations of Robert Tabernacle and Brockworth Free Church on this Good Friday and we're joined by our good friend, the Reverend Dr. John Sutcliffe. So let us worship together. I have a few crucifixes from various parts of the world. The one on the wall is from Kenya. This one is from India. It portrays Jesus looking out at the world, apparently resigned to his suffering. And in his suffering, he sees the suffering of others, which is plentiful among the poor of India. He is at one with them, and they are at one with him, and his slightly curved, outstretched arms and hands embrace them, and us, in his compassion and love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when you enter Jerusalem, people waved palm branches, branches and called out, Hosanna to the Son of David. As the week went by, the city filled with visitors to the festival, many of whom had never heard of you. And they took the word of the high priest and believed you were a blasphemer, a troublemaker, and they shouted for your crucifixion. Lord Jesus, when you were scourged like a common criminal, blood poured down your back 
and you were made to carry a heavy cross. You no longer looked like the man of hope and vision the disciples had known. When they fastened you to a cross they and sunk it in the ground, the jeering crowds and mocking soldiers did the work of your accusers, and you suffered as one of the suffering criminals. When the Son of Man is lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Lord, on this Good Friday, you have drawn us. We gather at the foot of your cross, awestruck. For you are the suffering servant and the Lord of the universe. You submitted yourself to the judgment of humans, yet your love judges all that is unloving in the world. Lord Jesus, we bow our heads in worship. All honour be given to you, for despite today looking like your humiliation and defeat, Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Thanks be to God. Amen. The scripture we're going to share this morning comes from the Gospel of John and from chapter 18 and there will be uh, three of us sharing in telling almost the entire story of the crucifixion of Jesus. So we begin in John chapter 18 starting at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, 
I am he. They stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because his disciples were known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews came together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. And if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Cappius, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him, didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Thanks be to God. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, 
and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 19 verses 1 to 16 and describes the sentencing of Jesus to death. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown out of thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went out once more and said to the crowd, Look, I will bring him out here to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Look, here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple guards saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, You take him then, and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. The crowd answered back, We have a law that says he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace and asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Remember, I have the authority to set you free and also to have you crucified. Jesus answered, You have authority over me only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. But the crowd shouted back, If you set him free, that means that you are not the emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king 
is a rebel against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he took Jesus outside and sat down on the judge's seat in the place called the stone pavement. In Hebrew, the name is Gabbatha. It was then almost noon of the day before the Passover. Pilate said to the people, here is your king. They shouted back, kill him, kill him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, the only king we have is the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. Thanks be to God for these words. John 19, verses 17 to 30. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written to put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven into one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfil what the scriptures said, they divided my clothes amongst themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you Tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they?
side. Were you there when they pissed him in the side? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you Who killed Jesus? Jesus came from a highly taxed part of the country, known for being a centre of unrest and the home of nationalist terrorists. Jesus wasn't a nationalist zealot, but one of his disciples had been. But Jesus did ch challenge the traditional understanding of the law and had shown a different approach, an inclusive approach, to communal life. He helped foreigners, like the Samaritan woman and the Roman soldier, and held up a foreigner as a good neighbour in one of his stories. Crowds warmed to his openness and welcome. They were moved by his teaching, which they saw was grounded in the lives of ordinary people as well as in all that was best in the faith of Israel. It must have been so exciting, thrilling, both for them and for him. Israel's leaders saw it differently. They were sensitive to nationalist agitation. It was not 30 years since a rebellion led by Judas the Galilean had, had put to be put down. Jesus attracted crowds. And though he was not rebellious, he was an influence for change. He had confronted the authority of the religious establishment and implicitly challenged their convenient relationship with the Roman authorities and the privileges collaborating with Rome gave them, their comfort, their power and their wealth. This was too much for the high priestly can. Their fears and suspicions led them to want Jesus removed and cowardly Pilate complied. But there is nothing unusual about people in power conniving to murder their opponents. What happened to Jesus has happened many times down the centuries as people in power have removed men and women who oppose them. Leaders who have a cosy relationship with the military and are surrounded by a coterie of people, they usually are, who benefit 
from agreeing with them. Such leaders are, were and are undermined by morally motivated people who challenge them and challenge their way of doing things. The response is invariably violent. For example, earlier this year, the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny recovered in Germany from being posed, most think, by emissaries of President Putin. On his return to Russia in January, Navalny was immediately arrested and imprisoned. Think too of the Chinese government's opposition of the dissidents in Hong Kong and of the Uyghur people because they have a different background, of President Erdogan's cruelty towards political opponents in Turkey, of President Lushenko's bullying in Belarus, or most recently of the general seizure of power and violent oppression of protesters in Myanmar. These leaders and others like them are so self-obsessed, so basically insecure and immature, they cannot see themselves in the mirror of history as they instigate modern Good Fridays. Yet, it wasn't only the leaders of Israel and the Roman governor who killed Jesus. Jesus was convicted by unthinking people who allowed themselves to be manipulated. And Jesus is killed again and again every time someone ignores people who are oppressed, every time someone gives a home to thoughtlessness, to a love of power, to pride, to arrogance, to privilege, to fake news, wherever there is a lack of compassion and people are dehumanised. Jesus didn't die for us, he died because of us. Remember the first line, the, uh, the line in our first hymn, Alas! My treason, Jesus, hath undone thee. Throughout the violence and taunting, Jesus didn't meet violence with violence. In John's telling of the story, especially, Jesus seems to be above the fray while the high priest and the Roman governor argued and the crowd of pilgrims, having been fed false news, shouted and jeered, Jesus remained calm. He met violence with a deep trust in God. There could be no more complete humiliation than being stripped, beaten, and made to carry a heavy wooden cross while being surrounded by soldiers and a jeering crowd, and then to be executed alongside criminals while the same soldiers, his executioners, made fun of Jesus and diced for his clothes. In the depth of his suffering, it was difficult to maintain his sense of the presence of God that he was able to forgive his persecutors. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He hung until he cried out, It is finished. His disciples had not been true to him, but he had been true to them. He was complete integrity. He overcame the fear of suffering and of death by trusting in the love and reality of God. 
it is finished. His work was completed in his death. He had remained true. The integrity of his love had held. In his life he had lived the way of love and on Good Friday when love came up against worldly power and fickle men and women he bore the cost of love. Yet his work is not finished, is it? His message still has to be believed and shared with millions of people who don't know Jesus, shared by followers of Jesus who are often as erratic as Peter. His work is not finished as long as love does not reign in the affairs of nations and there is hunger and injustice, violence and suspicion. His work is not finished as long as people feel alone, unwanted and overwhelmed, as long as children suffer, as long as there are bullying and corrupt leaders. His work is not finished even for us, for oftentimes the good we would do, we don't do, and the wrong we wouldn't do, we do. But on the first Good Friday, that part of his work was finished, the work for which he was born in Palestine. He had remained true to love, the way of God, and he accepted the consequences. With Mary and the other women, we stand at the foot of the cross horrified by what happened, horrified by what we see, horrified at the evil humans are capable of, like the evil of hungry children the evil of concentration camps and refugee camps, the evil of violent oppression, and even our ordinary day-to-day -day selfishness. Jesus died with his arms outstretched, embracing the world in the love of God. He died looking at the world with such compassion that one of the criminals who died with him worshipped him and a Roman soldier, an executioner, said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Amen. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we seek your forgiveness for every time jealousy, pride, arrogance and a love of privilege rule our lives and the lives of others. We seek forgiveness for every time knowingly or unknowingly we hurt another person. Suffering God, on this Good Friday, we surround with our love all people who are suffering. People who are known to us, we picture in our minds. And people unknown to us, who have all kinds of personal and physical conditions. We hold in our minds those who suffer because of the pride, jealousy, and power-seeking of national leaders, who, in their immaturity, can tolerate no questioning or opposition. People who have been cast into prison in Russia, Myanmar, Turkey, Syria, Belarus, China and Hong Kong. Suffering Lord, Surround all people who are suffering, wherever they are, with your love. Uphold them, give them courage, and let the light of the peace and courage of Jesus shine on them. Lord God, as we think of the Good Friday story, we pray for ourselves, that as we contemplate Jesus, in his trial and crucifixion. His spirit of unflinching love will grow in our lives. Amen.
Thank you for sharing this time in worship with us. It is good today that we can reflect on the importance of this day for those who would follow Jesus. So we go into this weekend with that opportunity to reflect, to take a moment of quietness and to pray for those we love who are enduring real distress at this time. So we go with the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit with us now, with us always. Amen.